So mainly I will uh, repeat very briefly the first one. So here first ionization energy, lithium and sodium will be the lowest. Then you have to compare with the magnesium, aluminium and silicon, which is uh, in the same period as well. So sodium will be the lowest one, then lithium. And then you can compare with uh, magnesium, aluminium and silicon. So remember about two to three and five to six drop using the zigzag shape. Then you can uh, arrange based on that. So magnesium is in group two, then aluminium is a little lower, then silicon is uh, the highest one. So basically you can arrange in, in that order. Electron affinity is the ability to take an electron. So basically halogenated groups, uh, they will have like uh, the um, easiest or the highest electron affinity because they like to take an electron and stabilize in the, in the negative form like Cl minus, F minus, and in the case with uh, F minus and Cl, sorry, F fluorine and chlorine, you can understand chlorine is a little big. So when it come, when additional electron comes from the outside, there will be no much uh, electron, electron repulsion. That is the idea. Chlorine is small, there will be very, the electrons will be more closer. So there will be more high electron, electron repulsions. So chlorine will have the highest electron affinity than fluorine. Then when you compare oxygen and carbon, so oxygen, you know, still O2 minus is the most uh, stable form of it. So basically uh, oxygen O minus first initially is a good one, but O2 minus is not preferred, but uh, it can also form. So basically O oxygen will have the next uh, electron affinity because it also can form O minus as well as O2 minus. And the carbon, you know, they mostly from the covalent compounds and uh, does not like to uh, get electrons uh, as anion or either cation form. So carbon will have the least because there are four electrons. So if you have to form like the stable cation or anion, carbon either should take four electrons or remove all four electrons. That is the most easiest way to form. But carbon does not form these ionic compounds, more or less they form the oil compounds. And uh, we have already discussed, so basically here in the electron affinity, uh, chlorine will have the highest, then fluorine, then oxygen, and then carbon. And we have already discussed about this melting point concept. So you know, when you go down the group, the polarizability is differing based on the uh, charge density. And the uh, compounds become more and more ionic. So which increases its melting and boiling point. So basically, you know, beryllium chloride will have the lowest, then uh, calcium, then barium. Again, uh, bond angle. So think about the bond angle uh, variation. So this is one of the things that students get a uh, little bit confused with the bond angles. So here, what do you have to understand here is when there is more repulsion, okay? When there is more repulsion, there will be more um, steric hindrance. And when there is more steric hindrance, the bond angles starts to decrease. Okay, so how this steric is considered? When you have bonding, bonding electrons, for an example, two bonds like this and two bond, another bond like this, <clears throat> the repulsion is not much. Okay, so when you have like one bond like this and the other bond like this, the repulsion between bonds is much uh, smaller. Basically there is repulsion, but it is much smaller. But when you have a bond as well as a lone pair, so the repulsion is very large now. So when there is a higher repulsion, always remember the bond angle starts to get smaller and smaller. In this case, you can see in NCL3, there are three bonds, including one lone pair. So basically here they are, the shape is like pyramidal where you have three bonds, sigma bonds and one lone pair. So the lone pair uh, repulsion is higher than bond pair, bond pair. So basically how it goes, uh, bond pair, bond pair repulsion is uh, the smallest one, the repulsions, and then the bond pair, lone pair and the highest is lone pair, lone pair repulsion. So when the repulsion increases, the bond angles starts to decrease. And here, silicon chloride, there are four bonds without it. Uh, this is tetrahedral structure, in fact. 
but there is no lone pair here because uh, four electrons are occupied in a covalent manner. And ICL4 minus, again, you can understand iodine, iodine is already a seven, so it will take one electron to form eight. And four bonds are formed with the chlorine and two lone pairs will be there. So basically ICL4 minus will have two lone pairs and NCL3 will have one lone pair and silicon chloride will have no lone pair, okay? So the shapes are not same, it's different. Here it is pyramidal, here it is tetrahedral, and here it is square planar. So, but you need to understand the repulsion between these. So bond here, or there are only bonds. So this will have the highest bond angle. And NCL3 will have uh, the next one. And ICL4 minus will have the smallest one because of there are two lone pairs. Okay, I want to add uh, some additional facts uh, here for you guys uh, because uh, we have how to consider this bond angle uh, concept when you have uh, same uh, ligands but uh, different uh, elements like nitrogen, silicon, and iodine. Now, this this is just different elements from different periods and different groups. But what if we have a situation like this? Now, this is uh, one of the typical examples that uh, we normally consider about. So think about this. Now here, this is uh, group five, right? Nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, and stibium, uh, bismuth, so antibody. So basically, when you have this same compound, which is the hydride form, think when the elemental size increases down the group, what is happened to the bond angle? They all have one lone pair and three bondings. So what you can see, the bond angle decreases, right? So why? These elements become larger, okay? And what you have to understand here, when this is going down, the electronegativity is decreasing. The electronegativity is decreasing means the ability to pull electrons decreases okay which creates higher electron density in these hydrogens causing higher repulsions that is why this bond angle is decreasing down the group and when you grow from this side to this side again you can see what is happening in the electronegativity the electronegativity is decreasing but here consider about the bond angles it is the other way around okay why because there is no change in the central atom the only different here there is a change in the central atom but here there are the differences with the ligands okay so understand increasing the size of the central atom decreasing the electronegativity decreases the bond angle but when you in the same period with the different uh, elements different ligands with the same central atom, when there is decrease in the electronegativity, there is a higher uh, bond angle because the central atom is common here. But when you have a like smaller atom now, fluorine, then chlorine is, you can see that is in the same group. So fluorine is smaller, but chlorine is larger, right? But still the electronegativity is small. Fluorine is a small atom, so but it electronegativity very high, so it will uh, pull electrons very effectively. Then there will be higher repulsion, so the bond angles are smaller. But chlorine is not efficient as fluorine, so therefore the bond angle differs in this way. Okay, a little higher. So this is also very important, necessary uh, to know. That is why I have uh, put here this. Then uh, electronegativity of oxygen atom. So this is again uh, very typical. So you, you can uh, use the oxidation state concept, but you have to also understand the charge as well. Because for an example here, water, it is minus two in H3O plus, still it is minus two. So then uh, you need to consider about the charge as well as the um, oxidation state if you are going with oxidation state because we did a similar thing uh, in the previous paper also using the oxidation state. So here there is OH minus which is already in minus charge so the oxygen is does not like much 
to accept more electron, which makes its electronegativity very poor. So oxygen OH minus will have the very poorest electronegativity here, the oxygen. Uh, in fact, the uh, electronegativity of oxygen. Then when you consider about H2O and H3O plus, you can imagine H2O is neutral, H3O plus is positive. So it likes to gain some electrons. So basically H3O plus will have the highest electronegativity based on the information here and H2O will be in between OH minus and H3O plus. So it is very easy to understand. Okay. And um, the last one. So here, this is about NO bond length. So we have also discussed a similar one like this. So when you consider about NO plus, so there will be a triple bond between a nitrogen and oxygen. And when you have FNO2, so there will be like a double bond and a single bond with fluorine. Uh, okay. And CLNO, again, there will be a double bond here like this. And NH2OH, there will be a single bond. I'm going to not, not draw this full structure. So. So when you consider about this bond length, so you know you can see there is a triple bond. So when there is a triple bond, the overlap between these orbitals are very, very small. So it will have the minimum bond length here. Okay. And then when you have NH2OH, it will have the single bond. So it will be have the highest. So it will be here, NH2OH, and NO plus will be here, which is the smallest one. And in between, we have uh, CLNO and uh, FNO2 which you have to uh, understand here, there is only double bond <clears throat> in CLNO. And here there is a double bond as well as single bond. So there is an in-between character between double and single when you have to consider about these two. So primarily this bond length is higher than this one. So according to that, you can arrange these two in the middle, okay? So NO will have the lowest and NH2OH will have the highest. And the uh, next lowest to NO is uh, CLNO and then FNO2, okay? So this is a typical question that uh, tests your ideas on uh, periodicity as well as the bonding concepts and other uh, parameters related to the periodic table, okay? So this is very straightforward. And B, part B, so we have given another typical uh, compound. So this is not much used in uh, organic or organic chemistry, but this is very important in synthetic organic chemistry. To cyanoguanidine is very important in uh, molecular chemistry. So you have given the structure here, uh, which is a very well known uh, chemical in agriculture as well. So you have to draw the most stable structure. So I will quickly uh, use the um, board to draw this one because it will take much time otherwise. So we have uh, given this structure. I will, to be sure, yeah, board is okay. So we have the structure, so NH, NH, and there is a carbon here, so NH, NH, and nitrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. So you can imagine there is a NH2 group, NH2 group, and there is a nitrogen and the terminal carbon. So more or less, if you have a terminal carbon and nitrogen, uh, it starts to uh, uh, give you an idea, this should be more or less a cyanide group. So we will see. So basically we have four nitrogens, which means uh, we have 20 valence electrons and two carbons, so A, 28, and uh, we have uh, like uh, how many hydrogens? Four hydrogens, so 32. So 32 divided by two is 16 electron pairs. So here already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine is occupied. So uh, 16 minus nine is seven. So basically we have to put seven uh, long electrons. So I'll put here one, two, and then three, four, and five, six, and even, uh, yeah, seven here also. 
this terminal should be eight. So here there is eight, eight, eight. So the only difference here is this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you can imagine this is a big molecule. So whatever you do, you can uh, change the electrons here. Uh, in fact, if you want, first you can put the charges. Now here, one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So there is no charge here. One, two, three, four, five, no charge. One, two, three, four, five. So there should be a negative charge here. One, two, three, four. So plus one here and here plus two. And here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So minus two. Okay. So you can see the overall charge is zero plus minus two minus one is minus three and plus three. Okay. Then try to minimize the charges. So there, this structure is a little bit big. So there are many ways that you can uh, fill the uh, octet. So because here you see these two basically they are octet it completed, right? But here also there is an octet that is completed. But the problem here is there is a negative charge. Okay. And as well as when you come here, there is a positive charge here. So it is not much actually good to keep a negative charge on carbon and positive charge on nitrogen. And then you have this terminal uh, carbon and nitrogen, you can see automatically there is plus two minus two, which should give you when you are practicing more and more with structures, this should be a cyanide group, nitrile group. So basically to find the most uh, stable one, we will go with the suitable one. So the suitable structure, which gives you the idea there is a minimum uh, charge in the separation. So you can give these two electrons like this. So this will be a carbon nitrogen triple bond. Two lone electrons is given. So eight electrons is covered and the charge is now zero as well. And then when you consider about nitrogen, so there is plus one here minus one. So you gave two lone electrons here, then these two accept these two lone electrons, the charge is canceled. So it is here like the same. So you give this two lone electrons and there will be a double bond here. The two lone electrons is here, the same. So this is given to this. And then you have this NH2. It is already in its stock octet form. Okay. So now you can see eight electrons is covered with no charge. Eight electrons is covered with no charge. Eight electrons is covered with no charge. And all other is eight electrons is covered with no charge. But remember, you can arrange in many ways. Now here, this uh, two electron was given by this carbon to this nitrogen. Okay. And remember, this lone electron also can be given to this carbon. And only one lone electron can be given by this nitrogen to this carbon. So at that time, also, there will be a double bond here. There will be a double bond here to complete its octet. But the problem is there is a charge thing. Okay, that is one way. And even you can keep these three and you can give this carbon, this bond, this bond, and this bond. So there will be another double bond forming here. So even this nitrogen can give this lone electron to this carbon. So there will be many possible ways because this structure is big, okay? But the most suitable and the most stable one without any charge distribution is this one. Because this structure does not have any charge. That is the important thing here. Okay. So the first for the first question, this is the uh, structure that they have expected from you. So there is a triple bond here, double bond here and in two groups that is bound to carbon, okay? So I will share the screen here now. Okay, so this is done. So we have the most accepted Lewis structure. Then you need to do flow resonance structures. So I'm not going to spend much time here. So these are different ways. So you can see how many resonance structures that you can draw. Not four, seven. So the questions also ask, 
excluding the structure drawn in above. So this structure, this is the only structure that does not have any charge separation or the charge. But here you can see how many other structures that you can do. Okay, so you can keep the cyanide group same and change the electrons in nitrogen. You see, this NH2 is have a positive charge and then this NH2 have a positive charge. Okay, and then you can keep the same NH2, but you can change this cyanide group as carbon, 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 nitrogen double bonds. You see here, same but two different structures. You can draw one of uh, like four of these uh, seven structures. Uh, this is uh, very straightforward at this point. Okay, then they are asking a few concepts again. So state the following regarding the carbon nitrogen. So you have given the electron pair geometry, shape and hybridization. So now this is straightforward. So I will uh, just uh, name my compound here. So this is nitrogen is one, carbon is uh, two, this is three, and this carbon is four, then this is five, and this is six. Yeah, so they're asking about C2 and uh, N3 and C4. So we have to give electron pair geometry, shape, and hybridization. So these are the three things that okay so this is c2 what is the electron pair geometry so here you can see there is a sigma bond in this side and there is another sigma bond this side remember we don't count the pi bonds in shapes as well as in repulsion units. So we go with the sigma bonds as well as lone electrons in the electron pair geometry. And we count the sigma bonds and the lone electrons separately for the shape, okay? So here anyway, there is no lone electrons. There are only two sigma bonds. So the electron pair geometry will be linear. Shape is also going to be linear. And then we have the hybridization. So what is the hybridization here? So it should be sp. There are only two bonds. Then nitrogen three is this one. So the electron pair geometry one, two, three. So it should be trigonal planar. But the shape is angular because there are two sigma bonds with a lone electron. So this is bent or either angular. You can use bent or either angular. And we have carbon number four. So you have four. Uh, in fact, you have uh, three sigma bonds and uh, there are no lone electrons. So it is very straightforward. So the shape should be trigonal planar and the electron pair geometry also trigonal. <coughs> Sorry. And the uh, hybridization here is uh, one, two, three, so again sp2 for this nitrogen and for this carbon again it is sp2, so no problem in that. One important thing that you need to understand in this entire structure is uh, how you move the electrons because if you know how to move electrons you can easily draw the Lewis structure and also uh, when you consider about this structure directly at this point, for an example, now I have drawn the skeleton and then I count the electrons and divided by two to reduce by. So you don't have to use that method. If you are an expert in drawing these structures, you can quickly understand NH2 means there should be two NH2 group to cover its octet and carbon nitrogen means it should be a cyanide group CN. And then uh, you can arrange this bonds based on that okay to draw the most stable one but to draw the other resonance structures it is always good to go with the skeleton uh, by applying all the charges so that will be the most uh, easiest way to get the uh, work done okay so next part says uh, so we will go very quickly for the next one so 
this is done we have discussed this one also and then you have to like uh, draw the shape in a definite manner by indicating all the bond val bond angle values so here you can see now this is sp2 so basically you can draw this as nh2 like this and this nh2 like this indicating there is an angle around 120 this one also around 120 these are around 120 and then uh, carbon nitrogen there is a lone pair here like this but this is also sp2 but remember this angle this angle should be uh, less than 120 you understand why so if you don't see the board i will sh stop sharing okay so this is sp2 this is also sp2 so this sp2 does not have any lone pairs so the bond angles are around 120 more or less but this nitrogen is also sp2 but see there is a bond angle that is <clears throat> less than 120 because the reason is there is lone pairs so i told you when there is lone pairs the repulsion is higher so basically bond pair bond pair repulsion is the smallest then bond pair lone pair and then lone pair lone pair so here there is a lone pair bond pair repulsion so this angle should be less than 120 okay this is it will be in between 115 and 120 okay and uh, then we have uh, carbon, this nitrogen, this bond is around 180 degrees. Okay, so that is the way that you can uh, draw this. Right. Okay, so that is also done. So then you can, uh, you should uh, able to uh, compare the uh, bonding orbitals. So basically they are asking between N1 and C2. So what is N1 and C2? So they are asking about N1 and C2, and then uh, C2 and N3, and they are asking about N3 and C4, okay? Right, so they are asking about N1 and C2. So which is this bond, okay? So automatically, you know this uh, carbon is a triple bonded carbon so this should be sp hybridized then nitrogen so when you consider about the uh, terminal nitrogen always remember so since this has two um, uh, characters which is necessarily participating for the hybridization one sigma one and one lone electron so more or less this can be sp but remember, this is a terminal nitrogen, so it can be like the normal uh, 2p orbital of nitrogen as well. Because when nitrogen is bonding as a terminal one, for an example, if you remember about hydrogen, so if you have think about this hydrogen, nitrogen and hydrogen. So nitrogen is having the uh, hybridization sp3 here, but hydrogen, we use the empty one, oneness, okay? But here, if you write SP, it is okay. There is no problem with that. But it can be also 2P because nitrogen based on its uh, electronic configuration, this, uh, this uh, bonding with the uh, carbon, it can be either between the uh, hybridized or even unhybridized 2P also. It depends, okay? And then C2 and N3. What is C2 and N3? So it is this. So again, this is between SP. So C2 and N3 is between SP and SP2. And uh, N3 and C4. So N3 and C4 is SP2 and SP2. No problem with that. Okay, so this is straightforward because we have now discussed this many times. Uh, similar questions so you can uh, put here either here this will be sp or 2p this will be sp then sp2 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 so that, that is how it goes and quite surprisingly the last part uh, does not uh, belongs to the same question but it belongs to something else so this is a part that is added additionally 
uh, like the part that we have discussed at the beginning. So normally this goes with question number uh, A with uh, five marks. And typically it will go with uh, the other part with the Lewis structure and go with like 10 marks. So five and five, it will be 10. So basically here there is an additional one because they have given only three marks for the first one. So consider two chemical substances. So we have uh, uh, CH3Cl. So all these will be like in the tetrahedral form. Uh, there will be hydrogens like this. Then there will be one hydrogen that is uh, outside and inside. So basically if this is outside. There will be this one which is inside the plane and there will be chlorine. So one is chlorine or either iodine. So they have given some properties. This is very straightforward. Okay. So you have, <clears throat> sorry, then you have given the boiling point as well. And the boiling point determination should be straightforward for you guys, because uh, you know, fluorine, chlorine, iodine has a high molecular weight than chlorine because these two are principally uh, gases and uh, the interaction between these two are more or less the London forces that you are going to observe. And hence, it mainly depends upon the molecular weight. So this one has a higher molecular weight, CH3I. So it will have the higher boiling point as well. So Wieschausen has the highest dipole moment. So think about the electronegativity. According to the electronegativity now, iodine and chlorine. So you have chlorine on top and then you have iodine. So this one will have higher electronegativity, which starts to pull electrons more than iodine. So there will be more pulling like this when you have chlorine. So there will be more charge separation and there will be more dipole moments. So basically here it is uh, CH3Cl. Okay. So Wieschausen has a stronger London dispersion. So based on the boiling point, you can automatically tell this should be CH3I. Okay. Because it depends uh, next about with the molecular weight and which substance has the strongest total intermolecular so again when there is a higher dipole movement so there will be higher separation and there will be little like poor interaction but when you have like a strong London dispersion force between CH3I there will be higher total intermolecular forces as well this is straightforward this is uh, very similar as question number two okay because this is asking between the intermolecular forces, this is asking total. So there sh you should consider intermolecular as well as intramolecular forces. So which type of intermolecular forces is dominant? So this should be London forces, okay? You can write London dispersion forces. London uh, dispersion forces. So basically uh, this question is uh, not hard or either not uh, easy. This question is just productive. That's it, okay. 